Hello, and welcome to APA Boot Camp for the seventh edition of the publication manual of the American Psychological Association. This is part one of two, and we'll be looking at APA style formatting. We invite you to use Ask a Librarian. It is a free service in the state of Florida. You can use text, chat, or email, and it is available Sunday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to midnight, Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. Uh, they can help you with just about any kind of question that you have. Also, certificates of completion will be provided after you finish a brief quiz at the end of this workshop. The information to get to this quiz will be at the end of this video. You may also want to open another browser window so that you can follow along and try out links. And remember to keep this one open. So our objectives for this uh, video will be for attendees to be able to describe the purpose of APA style, recognize the basics of APA writing style, and also identify the main parts of an APA formatted paper. The research guide for this has a lot of information. It's recently been updated. I'm gonna take you over to it right now, just so you can get a look. You can see that we have multiple tabs here. Each of these tabs or each of these links down here also correspond up here. So whichever way you prefer to do things. There is a note here because some professors may be still using the sixth edition, which is from 2009, instead of the new seventh edition, which just came out in October of 2019. So always make sure to ask your instructor which APA style your class is going to be following for a particular semester, and it's going to vary um, with your different professors. If you have previously used the sixth version of the APA style manual, this information over here will help you to get information about what has been changed in the seventh edition. Over here, we have information about handouts, guides. A lot of them are in PDF. Also, some sample papers were put in in Word format. So if you wanted to write over those and if you wanted to be able to see how things work together, you can do that. There are also some online help features here. And there are also some tutorials right here that APA has set up and they keep adding to them. So if you don't see something you need right away, one, get in touch with me, but two, you can go ahead and take a look back. There's also the site map so you can see everything that APA.org has available. Remember, they're the publishers of this uh, manual. And here's the information if you want to be able to borrow this for use in the library. It's available at the service desk at Boca and Jupiter. It's available in the general collection, which means for checkout at Harbor Branch. And then we also have a concise guide to APA style, which is also at the service desk in Boca. Formatting your paper for the seventh edition. There's a lot of information here. We've put it in different tabs and we'll be going over much of this during the presentation today, but you can see that there's a lot of information to help you understand where to put information, what they're talking about, etc. If you're not using tables and figures, don't bother to look at it. But all of this information will be useful. They do have just general sample papers. And then they have them broken out for student papers and professional papers. Student papers are like an abbreviated form of professional ones. So that's kind of nice. That's a feature they came out with in this edition. APA resources. If you're still looking at the sixth edition or have somebody who refers back to it, that information is still here. And our information about Ask a Librarian is over here. Back to the PowerPoint. So what is APA style? The American Psychological Association, or APA, developed a set of standards to create consistency in publications that writers of social sciences will follow. So social sciences would be things like sociology, education, library science, business. Each of those areas typically will use the APA format. And the rules that were set up or standards address how documents are formatted, how to credit sources, and then just basic writing style and organization of a paper. So why should you be using APA style? Well, when you're writing as a student, you're in a brand new community. It's the community of academia. And so you need to learn the customs and rules of academic writing, just like you would use new customs in a country that you visit. You're now in this country of the academic, and so you are going to have to get used to those customs. So the standards are gonna help you be able to show your research if you've done personal research, indicate the sources that you've used for evidence in your paper, 
provide uniform formatting so that it's very easy for you and others to know exactly where to look for particular types of information. And then you can also contribute to the academic community in an ethical manner. You actually are contributing to the academic community when you are turning in papers, when you do a peer review, just a lot of different ways that you can contribute that you may not have thought of. APA has two general types of papers, the student format and the professional one, which includes things for dissertations, research, submissions of manuscripts for publication, etc. And in the professional types of APA papers, I want to tell you about two of these because these are going to relate also to works that you use or journal articles that you typically would use in your research. So one would be literature reviews where you're finding all of the published information on a particular topic. And then the other would be the research or experimental papers that are going to present research that people actually did in a manner consistent with their professional guidelines. So if you are in education, business, sociology and library science, you're not going to be using test tubes like you would in chemistry, but you probably are going to be using surveys, interviews, and different types of research like that. APA style basics for language are that you be clear, specific in your descriptions and explanations, concise, use the fewest words possible to give the best and maximum information, be plain, use simple descriptive adjectives, and um, don't try to be too flowery, and then they have an entire chapter on reducing or avoiding bias as you write. And that's an important thing now. We're seeing much more information out about diversity, equity, inclusion. And so this reducing bias goes along with that. Point of view, you're advised to use personal pronouns where appropriate and don't use the passive voice. Use an active voice instead. So active voice would be we conducted a research experiment and passive would be the authors had been asked to conduct a research experiment. Here's a plain piece of paper. You can see that it's eight and a half by 11, a standard sheet of paper, one inch margins on all sides. You're going to be using double spacing and you're going to be indenting paragraphs half an inch. Notice that there's a number here at the top right. It's within the header and it's flush right. So it's right at the edge of the margin here. Spacing after punctuation marks is going to be one space. Um, some of you may have been using two spaces in the past, but APA says one space. And instead of just one font option, they've given you multiple font options. So some are sans serif, which are very clean looking. And these are the examples. And then there's serif, which have the little marks at the tops and bottoms of the letters. See the publication manual chapter two for additional information about any of these points. When you format your paper, number pages consecutively. And the pages are going to go in the following order. Title page, page one. An abstract, if used, is going to be page two. If you're not required to have an abstract, then page two is going to be the beginning of the text or the body of your paper. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you show the paper title at the top middle of this page. Again, you can go to a particular section in the APA manual, in this case, section 2.17 for additional information. Your references are going to begin on a new page after the last page of text. If you have tables and figures, and especially if you're turning something in for publication, you would have those at the end after the references. Notice each table, each figure, each appendix begins on a new page. For some classes, your professor may prefer that you include tables or figures within your document. So make sure that you check to find out. A student title page, this is what it's going to look like. There's that page number again. The title's going to go down about three or four lines from the top. Remember, we're using double spacing. That's why it looks like it's down this far. You're going to have the author's name in full, the affiliation, so you're going to indicate the department that the paper is for and the university, Florida Atlantic your course number and name that this is for, your instructor name, however they like to see their name, the assignment due date, and like I mentioned, the page number. When you are using different sections within the paper and you're trying to mark different sections, you're going to use different levels of headings. So you're going to be formatting them in a particular way. So the first one, the main one is going to be centered, bold-faced, uppercase, and lowercase heading. Your text is going to begin as a new paragraph, and it's going to be within a half inch indentation. This is what a secondary or second level of heading looks like, third, etc. In most cases, I see only levels one, two, or possibly three used in student papers. So 
you probably will not have to even look at levels four and five. If you'd like to be able to see some papers, I do very well when I look at samples. Here's where you can go to look at the different style of papers. And again, those are listed in the APA Bootcamp LibGuide. To get help, go to our library homepage, use Ask a Librarian, or request a consultation. We can do them in person and also online. Follow us on our social media. And to get your quiz for the certificate of completion, go to tinyurl.com slash APA Bootcamp hyphen seven hyphen PT1 as in part one. The recording is going to be available at our YouTube site, as well as at the video and tutorials page in FAU Libraries website. Again, thank you for viewing the APA Bootcamp for the seventh edition, part one on formatting.